Trust TV. It's time to take you around the world of sport for a weekend uh, world of sport here. I am Adeni Ajishafe. A lot of happenings that will be coming up this weekend in the UEFA, uh, in the Europa, uh, talking about the English Premier League, rather. <laughs> a lot of mix up there. We just have to look at matches coming up in the MPFL for this weekend. We look at matches coming up in the NNL, Nigeria National League, not forgetting Europe, top five leagues in Europe. And also, we'll be starting with the review of the week. What happened between Sunday, Monday through to uh, Friday? We'll be looking at those reviews while we preview matches for this weekend. Once again, you are welcome on the show, 360 Sport, where we give you juicy sports stories across the globe. Starting from the home scene, a Nigerian. She traveled to London. She was able to do well in boxing. Her name is Yetunde Aino. Yetunde Aino winning away from Nigeria, winning a banter with belt. That is international banter with belt. What boxing uh, federation belt there. She was able to win against Laura Payne in England. That fight took place in London and she won. Good one for the lady, a police constable who did Nigerian so proud after winning a fight far away in London. Well, even though this lady, as we speak about her, she's also a boxing judge and also a boxing referee. That particular event came up or just uh, between Saturday and Sunday and we just have to look at what she did, her prowess in the world of sport as she was able to do well for Nigeria, winning in the international banterweight, despite the fact that she is a referee and also a judge in boxing. Celebrating yesterday, I know they are looking at the review of activities that happened just before today, starting with her story in the world of boxing. And also during the week, we also have to talk about uh, two heavyweight boxers who finally signed a deal to face each other uh, that, that particular fight will be coming up in Wembley, London. Their names, Tyson Fury, the one they call the Gypsy King, and Body Snatcher, Dillian White. They eventually agreed to sign a £30 million bout where it will be a mandatory challenger to Tyson Fury. Talking about Dillian White, if you look at the statistics there, the age, they are the same in age. They are in fight, he has actually fought 30 times. Uh, Tyson Fury has fought 32 times. And you have where uh, Fury winning all, all his fight, 31 fight. He has won all, he has never lost. He drew one and he actually won 30. And now you look at uh, Dillian White having he won 28 out of 30. He lost two, 19 knockout, and you have Tyson Fury standing on 22 uh, knockout. Six feet, nine inches tall, Tyson Fury, six feet, four inches tall, Dillian White. That is the statistics of these two great fighters who will be facing themselves in April 2022 at the Wembley Stadium. It will be a fight to finish between the two fighters because Dillian White right now is a mandatory challenger for the World Boxing Council belt that Tyson Fury is holding. That news came out after agreeing on Tuesday that they will be fighting. Tyson Fury right now will be taking the largest part of the deal. He will be taking 80% chunky part of, the, of that particular fight. But the fact that Dillian White agreed to fight is a, is a wonderful news because it has been a while while he has been dragging feet, not signing that deal. But eventually, the two will be facing off in April over there in the city of London. Now we also look at what happened during the week as we are reviewing the entire week. Let's move straight to talk about the UEFA Champions League. Matches were played and quickly let's look at the result of those matches where Chelsea, they defeated Lille by two goals to nil. Just had to give it to Kai Havert uh, who scored all those goals. And Villarreal playing one or draw against Juventus as they play out 1-1 one -one there in that Particular, particular game where Arnold Danjuma and I, Julian Samuel Chukwese, they were all there to play uh, those games, looking at the fact that Chelsea uh, right now, they celebrate the fact that they won against Leeds at the Stamford Bridge, looking at the, uh, the Champions League result there that happened on, on Tuesday, and also another match that came up on Wednesday between two teams. Quickly, let's look at the result of the ever Champions League also on Wednesday, where Atletico Madrid play one or draw against Manchester United. United travel away to play at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium at the ex stadio there, and they play 1 1, while Benfica also play 2 2 against Ayas. Cody Vuan's star, Hola, after scoring against his team, he also made up for that by scoring at one of the goals to make it 2 2 against Portuguese side, Benfica. We've been looking at the UEFA Champions League Tuesday, Wednesday fixture uh, result as those fixtures went down over there in Europe. 
four matches and you have those results there. Chelsea, they were able to do well against Leeds while uh, Villarreal drew against Juventus. And also not forgetting the fact that Ajax, they traveled to play against Benfica and they drew 2-2 two -two as uh, uh, those matches actually went down in the UEFA Champions League Tuesday and Wednesday there. Well, for Juventus, the old lady, they were able to get a draw away. Now we move away from that particular story. Yes, sir, uh, we've been looking at the review of the week. Let's talk about uh, another story that broke out during the week. On Wednesday, Nigerian Super Falcons, the top team of Ni for Nigerian ladies, travels to Cote d'Ivoire to play the second leg of the uh, Orkan qualifier. That is African Women Nations Cup that will be taking place in Morocco. Well, the first leg, they won two lane in Abuja, where Ifeoma Onumunu actually carried the day there. But the second leg, they traveled to Cote d'Ivoire. They went there, they saw, and they conquered. They were able to win that game by a long goal. They did so well there, beating the home team over there in Abidjan. They scored a goal, and the goalkeeper of Nigeria, Nandose Chiamaka, was able to save a penalty that saved the entire country. Let's have a look at this. Chama Canada say doing also proud in that game against Cote d'Ivoire Lady Elephant as she was able to at least uh, parry the penalty away to save Nigeria. After that particular uh, penalty uh, saved by her, then Nigeria, they were able to win. Cocktail of Esther Okonkwo who scored for Nigeria and were able to silence the Lady Elephant by 3-0 aggregate. Yes, we did it and our ladies, uh, they went ahead to celebrate. Let's see their celebration after the game. <laughs> The elephants of Cote d'Ivoire over there in Abidjan as they were able to win one nil away and at least uh, two nil from, uh, from home, making it three nil aggregate and they qualify Nigeria for the Orkhon that will be taking place in Morocco. Well, the good thing is that the ladies were so happy that they couldn't even wait to stay a night. They decided, okay, the entire team, let's come back to Nigeria and celebrate this qualifier. After all, we did it away and we did it at home. Let's go back to Nigeria. Not knowing what actually lies ahead, they got to Abuja to enter the country became a problem. Why? COVID-19 issues. Well, news came out that uh, some confusion of people came in. Uh, they were also trying to circumvent the NCDC protocols, and this particular incident broke out. Let's look at what happened to the ladies after they got to the airport. No, we came back, we arrived at 12 30 from Ivory Coast, and this is 4 a.m. We're stuck in here, locked inside. We don't know what's happening. Someone should talk to us. Someone should just talk to us. Please. This is a super falcon. This is a national team. We're stuck in here for no reason. They're not letting us go out. Look at what they are doing at the airport. After wasting time, they asked us to pay money. Why should we give them money? They should be happy we won the match. After holding us for five hours because of COVID, now they're locked everywhere. Like, who does that? We are so angry. We need some answers, please. Yeah, it's just very, very frustrating. We had a two-hour flight from the Ivory Coast to return, and we've already been in this room for almost two and a half hours. Uh, very frustrating to, to come back home and, and have our players have to go through this. 
this nonsense on all these COVID uh, tests, which we've already taken uh, multiple times to play the game and leave. So I don't really understand it, uh, but, but it's very, very frustrating. Nigerian Super Falcons there. After qualifying for the Nations Cup, they were met with that particular treatment at the airport. Well, we were looking at uh, the review of the week of what happened during the week in the uh, sporting world. Well, Super Falcons of Nigeria were not too happy with that particular treatment. In fact, a lot of Nigerians were asking the question, what if this could have been done, could this have been done rather, so the Super Eagles of Nigeria, nobody would dare that. Why are we treating the ladies like this? Questions have been asked. Well, after that, the Minister of Youth and Sports said, okay, they will be probing, they will probe that particular incident. And afterward, the Nigerian Football Federation issued a statement. Let's look at that particular statement that the issue about that incident. Now, if you look at the uh, statement from the NFF, NFF says airport incident unfortunate. The Nigerian Football Federation are described as unfortunate the incident that saw players and officials of the senior women national team, Super Falcons, delayed for over three hours at the Namdi Aziko International Airport, Abuja, on arrival from Abidjan on Thursday morning. NFL General Secretary Dr. Mohamed Sanusi said it was an unfortunate incident because we had our protocol officers on ground at the airport and they didn't need food before the team arrived. We are a responsible organization and the various national teams have been going out and returning to Nigeria since the COVID-19 protocols, procedures and guidelines started. We have never been caught napping. The issue had to do with COVID-19 protocols and we had no control over how things would be approached by the officials in charge at the airport each time. In this particular case, we fulfill our part of the requirement. However, some other group of individuals arrived at the same time at the Super Falcons contingent and were bent on circumventing the process. And this compelled the health officials to adopt stand measures and even lock up some of their offices. It was beyond us, but we have already apologized to our players and officials over this incident. If you look at this particular statement issued by the NFF, a lot of people are looking at why did they match the Nigerian Super Falcon with those contingents that tried to circumvent the NCDC protocols? Why didn't they treat them with civility? Why didn't they separate the Super Falcons with special treatment after qualifying for the nation's call? Are we going to say we don't know the Super Falcons anymore? Are they now the part of the contingent? So many questions arising from that particular statement issued by NFF. If you had to look at that statement to some extent, if the protocol officer of NFF, or the, the Super Falcons was on ground rather, and the NCDC could not respect the fact that he, is, he was there to welcome the Super Falcons, that shows that we really need to focus on how we treat one another in Nigeria. The Super Falcons are heroes of this country. They won the Nations Cup for nine good times. Our men have done it three times. This lady has won it nine times. And they are right now going for the tenth one. Who knows? Maybe they will also scoop this. They need a lot of respect from every angle of Nigeria, be it administrator, be it government. Everyone should know that this lady has really done Nigerian proud. Well, we've been looking at the Super Falcons treatment after qualifying for the Nations Cup. We're still waiting to see what's going to happen concerning that probe that the minister said they will do concerning that incident. Now, so let's leave that aside and move away so that we look at also other uh, things that happen during the week. Now, let's talk about uh, Europa League. Europa League also had some matches that came up, and we quickly look at some clubs, especially Barcelona, dumping Napoli out of the knockout round playoffs. Let's look at those uh, results and the aggregate. While Sevilla, perennial winners, uh, winners of uh, Europa League, they were able to, they lost that game away to Dinamo Zagreb in Croatia. But due to aggregate, 1 3 2 on aggregate. And you have uh, other uh, results there. Well, looking at the fact that Barcelona, they did well against, uh, against uh, Napoli as they were able to defeat them. 5-3 on aggregate after winning 4-2 away in the city of Naples in Italy. And you have uh, Real Betis also winning against Zenit St. Petersburg of Russia, 3-2 by aggregate. Real Sociedad of Spain, they lost by 3-5 on aggregate. Leipzig defeated them by 3-1. I have Atalanta of uh, Italy defeating Olympiacos of uh, 
Greece 3 0 and on aggregate 5 1. We've been looking at uh, Europa League, well, knockout uh, round playoffs, while the round of 16 fixtures, uh, the draws rider, right, uh, was actually done so uh, yesterday. But to let you know what happened, Napoli, they tried their best, but it wasn't good enough as Barcelona did it well, dumping them out of the Europa League. Who knows? Maybe this time around is also coming to Spanish team because we have a lot of them there. You have Sevilla, Barcelona, Real Betis still rearing to go to see if they can scoop the Europa Cup. Still reviewing sporting activities during the week. Let's move away from Europa as we quickly look at uh, NWFL. That is Nigerian Women Football League. Matches were played during the week on Wednesday precisely uh, where we have uh, 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 this result for you there. Well, Delta Queens of Fasaba, Delta State, uh, they defeated uh, Abia Angels by two goals to nil. Confluence Queens, they won, uh, won their game by a long goal against Nasarawa Amazons. They defeated the solid base by a long goal over there in local Jakogi State. Sunshine Queens lost at home against Rivers Angel by two nil. Nigeria Tales of Abuja, they won their game 3 0 against Pelican Stars of Calabar. FC Robo Queens of Lagos did well. They won 3 1 against Royal Queens uh, of Wari. 3 1 is ended there. Those are the matches that was played on Wednesday by the Nigerian Women Football League after having uh, some time off. Now the league is back and they played their match day eight there. Now let's look at the way the table stands after playing those matches in five different stadia in Nigeria. The table stands right now. In the group A, Nasarawa Amazon are topping with 15 points after playing uh, seven matches. They have a goal difference of 12. You have Edo Queens are second on the law with 14 points, uh, followed by Nigeria Tess of Abuja there with 11 points, playing seven matches, six goal difference. Confluent Queens of Lohoja with 11 points, Seven matches they've played so far. Oshun Babes, they have six points. Adamawa Queens, six points. Minus seven in goal difference and minus eight. They've considered more uh, goals than they score. Pelican Stars, the former giant when it comes to women football in Nigeria right now, are really, really so down in their performance. They have just three points out of seven matches they've played so far. Pelican Stars, Oh, what's the way to go? Minus 13. They've considered so many goals against, uh, uh, against themselves. Pelican Stars of uh, Calabar. They are still talking about the table. Now, let's look at Group B uh, in the uh, Women's League uh, that actually happened on Wednesday. The result there, the table rather, in Group B. We have Rivers Angels. They have a 16 point topping Group B after playing seven matches. They have good difference of 11. They scored 13 and considered just two. Delta Queens of uh, Delta State there, precisely in Asaba. They have 13 points, play seven matches, nine goals were scored. They have two against them, seven goals difference. And you have FC Robo Queens of Lagos. They have four uh, goal difference. They've scored eight, four against them, and they have 13 points so far. Bielsa Queens, Sunshine Queens, Abia Angels, and Royal Queens of Bori in dark pecking order, standing fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh with 11 points, four points. Uh, the three teams, Sunshine Queens, Abia, Angels, and Royal Queens, are all having four points apiece. That's how it went down in the Nigerian Women Football League during the week. That was on Wednesday as we are reviewing the activities that happened during the week. Well, our ladies didn't know how to play football. While the Super Falcons were conquering in the Orkham qualifiers, the ladies too were doing business at home, playing in the Nigerian Women Football League, NWFL, after returning from break. Now let's move on as we, uh, we've been looking at the review of the events during the week. But this time around, let's leave reviewing, let's come to previewing of matches that will be coming up this weekend. Although it has started yesterday, FC won Rocket, uh, they play against Crown FC in the NNL. But now let's look at matches that will be coming up today in the Nigerian National League uh, day three fixtures. In the Northern Conference, Group A1, we have ABS versus Zamfara United. Yobe Desa Stars, they will be at home against Sakoto United there. It's going to be a big match. City FC of Abuja will be hosting Oya Sport International. So many FCT teams in the M uh, NNL, they are really doing well. El Kanemi Warriors, uh, they will be playing against Mighty Jet. El Kanemi Warriors from Maiduguri, they'll be hosting Mighty Jets. These two teams are formerly with the MPFL, but right now they are playing NNL. Very, very strong teams. And now let's look at A2, Northern Conference A2. Now we have NAV. That's Nigeria 
Nigerian Air Force uh, team. They were playing Kogi United also here in Abuja. DMD versus Rose Safety will be coming up also today in the Group A2 Northern Conference. Nigerian National League Day 3 fixtures. Green Beret against Kebi United. Doma United play way to Jigawa Golden Stars as JM Liberty will be hosting Adamawa United. In the Southern Conference, we quickly look at San Agora Group B1, Ikorodu City of Lagos. They will be at home in Lagos again, Bende Insurance. Bende Insurance fly it around, yes. The state government fly them to wherever they want to play football. Good one for the state government. Gateway United versus Van Dresser. Another match coming up today in the Southern Conference Group B1. Osh United in Oshobo will be playing against Giant Brillas. Why Ibom Youth from Ak? While Ibom State play against a J. Atete at Belkuta Stormers, they will be at the Olumo City to host Campos FC of Lagos in the Nigerian National League Day 3 fixture that we've been looking at. Let's go to Southern Conference B2. Matches that will be coming up is Jebu United at the Jebu Ode will be hosting Otasolo FC of Lagos. In a way, United will be at home against. Uh, Rovers, formerly known as Calabar Rovers, they travel to play in there with Wari Wolves. Wari will be uh, over there in Wari, be hosting Bayesa United in Southern Derby, uh, Southern Conference B2. While Sinosho uh, will be hosting Go Round FC. You remember Go Round FC in the MPFL? Now they are playing NNL. Those are the fixtures that will be coming up in the Nigerian National League, the second tier of our league. We just have to roll it out. All the matches coming up this weekend is a weekend uh, that's uh, full of uh, matches everywhere. MPFL, NNL. We just rolled out NNL for you there now. Let's move away from NNL. Let's look at matches for this weekend in the MPFL. Matches will be coming up. A lot of matches uh, now start from Heartland. They'll be hosting Ayimba International, that big one there. Oriental Derby, if you want to call it that way, it's going to be a big one between Heartland of Oweri versus Ayimba. That's a team. They've really done well when it comes to football in Nigeria. Now they play a way to Heartland. Now, still talking about the future in the MPFL, Remo Stars. Now they'll be playing against Katsina United over there in Ikene. Today, those matches coming up, Dakada versus Lobby Stars, big one over there in Uyo. Aqua United, a Glens Plateau United, is a big match there. Defending champion Aqua United, they play away to uh, Table Topaz, Plateau United. Well, as it is right now, well, uh, it's going to be a match that everybody wants to see what's going to happen between Plateau United and Aqua United. Abia Warriors versus Shooting Stars, Enugu Rangers versus Kano Pillars. Can Kano Pillars uh, at least get out of the doldrum of Lucy now and do something wonderful against Rangers uh, in that game? Rivers United, the team that has been beating everyone, they will be playing against Nasarawa United at the Amasemeka Stadium over there in Portara Court. Quara United hosts Nigeria Nados in the North Central Derby. While you have MFM, MFM of Lagos will be at home against Sunshine Stars, Southern uh, Southwest Derby there. Wiki Tourists of Bauchi, where Kabiru Dogo holds sway. They'll be playing against uh, uh, Gombe United, where you have uh, uh, a team of uh, uh, Northern teams there playing themselves. Those are the fixtures that will be coming up this weekend in the match day 15 of the MPFL, Nigerian Professional Football League. Now, let's quickly look at something. Let's look at the way the table is standing before the matches be coming up. After they play match day 40 in the MPFL, the table stands doors. Let's look at it. Rivers United are topping with 29 points, followed by Plateau United, who are just a point. Adrift uh, Rivers United, 28 point they have. Rangers are third. You have Raymond Stars in that pecking order. Aqua United, who are defending champion right now, standing fifth on the log with 23 points at the same point they have with Raymond Stars. Quara United, Eimba International, Sunshine Stars, Gombe United, and have Nasarawa United from six to 10. So we just roll out 1 to 10 for you, the table toppers. Now let's look at from 11 to 20, the mid-table to the bottom of the table. Wikitaris of Bauchi are standing 11th on the low with 28 points, minus one goal difference after playing 14 matches. Shooting stars of Ibadan are right now standing 12, 19 points, alongside lobby stars of Makordi. Kano Pillars are standing 14 with 17 points, a minus five goal difference for the Meizugida boys there. Niger Tornado, 16 points. They have uh, minus four. They are standing 15th on the log. Abia Warriors, Katina United, Heartland of Oweri in Dalpeking under from 16 to 18. And you have 18 and 19 belonging to Dakada. 
that Kada will be playing home in their match day 15 and have MFM of Lagos in his uh, uh, southwestern debut there. Well, let's quickly go on a short break. By the time we'll return, we'll take you on the top five leagues in Europe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are in here for today's NPF and other match officials on the two sets of... PFL at least uh, clips there for you to enjoy. Talking about Aqua United versus Heartland, not forgetting Katsina also against Heartland in the MPFL as we just roll out fixtures for this weekend and also looking at the table as it's stand in March Day 14 before the March Day 15 fixtures will be coming up. Now let's leave uh, the Nigerian League. Let's look at at least there are people who follow the top five leagues in Europe. Let's give them the fixtures that will be coming up this weekend. It has started on Friday. Some something defeating the what they did well against Norway City. Now let's look at fixtures for this weekend in the English Premier League as it will be happening live. Let's look at those fixtures quickly. Leeds United, after losing their game last time, they will be playing against Tottenham or Spore. Can Tottenham or Spore get a win now because Antonio Conte is not a happy man due to the fact that after defeating Manchester City, they lost their game and now they will be playing to Leeds United uh, today. Brentford, Brentford versus Newcastle United. Uh, that will be another match where they'll be having uh, Christian Eriksen who will be starting for Brentford today. We're playing that game against Newcastle United. And still talking about the matches coming up, you look at Brighton versus Axton Villa. Brighton at the American Express Stadium, they'll be hosting Axton Villa there. Well, uh, we'll be happening live. Axton Villa, can they win that game? It is very possible. Steven Jira, well, let's see what he's going to do. Crystal Palace versus Burnley, another match that will be coming up today. Uh, well, Patrick Vieira against Burnley. Manchester United at the Old Trafford will be at home against Watford. Uh, they play against Watford this weekend. Uh, well, Nigerian Emmanuel Dennis, can you do something wonderful against Manchester United? It is very possible. It is very possible. My United against the Rav Ragnick team, uh, well, that's a team that uh, uh, right now they just have to get their acts well against Watford. If they want to really make statement concerning the top four, Arsenal are really knocking. They are just a point behind Manchester United. Everton against Manchester City. That's going to be the biggest my people want to see between Man City versus Everton. Good easy park is the place. Can uh, the man call uh, <laughs> the man that has been doing wonderful work, uh, your job with Chelsea then, but moving to Everton, there has been a battle of fire uh, for Everton manager who will be hosting Guardiola. Can they do it against Manchester City? 
to uh, in that match between Everton and Man City. That is a match everyone wants to see what will be happening between Everton and Man City. West Ham United at the City of London against Wolverhampton Wanderers who really did well, shocking the shock that Tottenham all sport. Well, that's, those are the matches that will be coming up in the English Premier League for this weekend. Now, let's move away straight to La Liga. Matches will be coming up in La Liga Satanda. Mallorca against Valencia. Getafe against Alaves. Real Madrid play away to Rayo Vallecano. While Celta de Vigo, they will be playing at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium against Atletico Madrid. Villarreal will be hosting Espanyol at Sevilla. Sevilla play host to Real Betis. Real Sociedad will be at home against Osasuna, while Atletico Bilbao, they will play away to Barcelona. Can Bilbao defeat Barcelona again? It is very possible they dump them out <laughs> at the Spanish Cup. Now, straight away to the uh, Italian Serie A. Now, quickly, let's look at the fixtures that will be coming up this weekend in Italian Serie A. Salanitana will be at home against uh, Bologna. Juventus travel to Empoli. Uh, those are the fixtures there. Sassuolo against Fiorentina. You have Torino or Linus team there will be hosting Cagliari. Hellas Verona against Venezia. Tyro Ebio, he is injured as we heard. Uh, well, maybe he won't be playing today. Spezia against Roma. Can Jose Mourinho and his last just revive themselves against Spezia? Spezia team that will be coming up also uh, this weekend. Lazio versus Napoli. Big match there in the city of Rome where Lazio will be hosting Napoli. Victor Ozime will be hoping that maybe he will be able to score uh, in that game that everyone wants to see. Lazio versus Napoli. Big match in that particular game. Fixtures for this weekend in the Italian Serie A where they play defensive football. Let's go to Germany. Top five leagues in Europe. We are giving you the preview of matches for this weekend. Now, German Bundesliga quickly. Matches are be coming up there in the Bundesliga. Well, Leverkusen will be playing. Borussia Dortmund will be playing. Matches will be coming up. Let's look at the German Bundesliga fixtures quickly. Now, as I said earlier, uh, matches in the German Bundesliga. Bayern Munich are already running away with uh, the league there, and they are really running away with it. If you can have the Bayern Bundes German Bundesliga fixtures quickly before we look at the French League One uh, now. Now, let's look at uh, French League One now. Strasbourg against OG Sydney. PSG will be hosting St. Etienne. Monaco play against Reims, why Engas will be at home against Lens. Those are the fixtures coming up in the French League One. Lyon versus Lille, uh, Torres versus Marcel, and uh, you have Mens against Nantes, Clermont against Bordeaux. Those are the matches uh, that will be coming up. Well, we have to see the team of uh, uh, Moses Simon. Nantes against Mens. Will Moses Simon be doing yeoman's job for his team there? He has been fantastic so far. This season, Badu versus Clermont will be also uh, will also be uh, coming up uh, today. Now let's look at German Bundesliga quickly. Uh, fixtures uh, for this weekend. Uh, Taiwan Wawani's team, Union Berlin, will be at home against Mainz 05. His former team, he moved from Mainz 05 to join Union Berlin. And that team will be playing against Mainz 05 today. Bayern Leverkusen will be at home against Armenia Belfit. Mönchengladbach will also be hosting VFL Wolfsburg as Atta Berlin play away to Freiburg. Grutter Fraud, newcomers, will be hosting FC Cologne. Entran Frankfurt will be at home against Giant Bayern Munich as RB Leipzig. Uh, the team that has been shocking everyone when it comes to UEFA Champions League, they will be playing against uh, VFL Bochum 1848 as FC Augsburg play host to Borussia Dortmund in the German Bundesliga fixture for this weekend. We just quickly we preview all the games that will be coming up in the Nigerian National League, Nigerian Professional Football League, and the top five league in Europe for you to have a clue of matches that will be coming up this weekend weekend. Now we have to go on a short break for you to have a feel of Nigerian lady, the super falcons, how they did it the first leg. By the time we return, we unveil our guest.
Hawkins doing exploit there. First leg in Abuja at the M. Grabiola Stadium. They won 2 0. Travel to Cote d'Ivoire. They also they pipped them by a long goal, making a 3 0 aggregate and qualify for the Nations Cup. Celebrating our ladies there. Super Falcons, they are the hero of this week. Now, as we are talking about the Super Falcons, there is a particular event that took place in Kano called Ramat Corp. Ramat Corp is in, at least in remembrance of the former head of state, General Muritala Ramat Mohammed. That event has been taken up by the Youth Fund, Youth for Federation of Nigeria. They always organize it every year in February. And FCT, Team FCT, they went there, they saw, and they conquered. They were able to win the Ramat Cup under 16 football competition. Unbelievable. Fox time in history, and they were able to scoop it. 21 teams came on for that particular event, and FCT, Federal Capital Territory, they won it, cut seal of NU's Academy. And today we'll be unveiling uh, our guest in the studio, the managing director of NU's Academy, who did Federal Capital Territory proud in the person of NS Kylie. Good to have you. Thank you. Okay, your team did well uh, in FCT, uh, over there in Kano, rather, to represent FCT in that competition. First of all, how did you feel winning the Ramat Cup, that's night edition? Uh, it was excited because of, you know, uh, the Ramat Cup is biggest competition in Nigeria under uh, 16 years old. Uh, you cannot see easily uh, that biggest competitions, mm. but uh, we have attended and uh, we have got success uh, and we were so happy. And you know, because of the history, uh, we made it actually. Uh, first time um, FCT won that cup. That's another thing that makes us so excited. Okay, now before you actually went for the competition, was there any, okay, maybe I could see they were going to win, as in from you? Uh, let me be honest, uh, we go there to judge our team because uh, we have played a lot of friendly match in uh, Abuja and we have attended some uh, competition based on Abuja as well. But uh, we couldn't see what we can do, uh, what we were expecting in our team. But uh, we said that, okay, since we have this opportunity, let's go there. And let's, because we know that the states are coming with the best players. So it's an easy way to judge your quality football, uh, how you can develop as well. Also, so uh, I didn't think that uh, we are going to be champion because in the football uh, everything can be happen in a second. Uh, so that's why, uh, of course, we had uh, expectation. Like if you ask, uh, of course, we expected to be champion. Every team is coming for that to be champion. Mm. Uh, so the result come out and. We it had, went well. Yeah, it went now, well. Now, N-Sport Academy. We've been looking at the Team FCT winning, if we can have our caption back again, Team FCT winning the uh, Ramat Cup for the 39th edition. That's the topic we're looking at. Now, we'll, now uh, looking at this particular competition, a lot of uh, com uh, strong teams like Kano, the host, in yes, fact. the Kano, host, Kwara, Kwara Gombe. Hmm. They are really strong team. But for your team to be able to do it, this is the first time. Yes. Now, let's look at N Sports Academy. That's the team that represented FCT. Yes. And you guys were able to do it. Tell us about this, your team. Like, uh, N U Sports Academy established 2019. For the past you know, 39 uh, years, Ramat Cup football. I don't know why this came out. Mm. Obviously, we couldn't do, um, achieve actually what we are planned. But later on, uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of screening programs in Abuja. Like we have gone street by street. So we have selected a lot of uh, players. Mm. So from there as well, we eliminated time by time. Like this is the team that we almost work one year about it. Not like any sports academy doesn't have only football team. We have swimming, football, basketball, athletics, taekwondo. Oh, it's not ball. just football. It's not only football. We have seven Different fields. Sp yeah. How seven, many sports? Seven fields. Seven faced sports. Yeah, and we are actively going on junior and senior. Hmm. Like uh, now, football, uh, if you see this one, is U16 team. We have U14, U13, and U15. Hmm. So, you know, uh, if you are doing those kind of teams, 
you have to put a circle mm. because uh, uh, who are coming from under they have to reach for U16 again because mm. you have to develop them at the right age. So from what you are saying now you have under 15, yes. under 16, yes. under what again? Uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Well, for football. But you have yes. other sports like basketball. Of course. Just we finish it uh, like basketball clinics that September 46th we have done at the National Stadium and 160 athletes attended. From there we have choose uh, 59 athletes again so that we are always preparing, always it's going to be circle so that uh, when your players are graduated from school or gone somewhere else, so you have others to focus on. So your team will not be finished end of the day, just it will be continuous to go in. Uh, it will be a continuous yeah. process. So as once uh, uh, as something are passing out, another set is ready. Yeah. Have you, okay, in the academy, uh, this uh, N-Youth N -Youth Sport Academy, uh, have you actually have uh, maybe passed some students, like secondary school? Or? Like uh, what we do, actually, uh, we have done uh, MOU with Ministry of Sports and Youth Development 2020. You know, we are taking from them uh, 20 students, athletes. From the Federal Ministry of Sports? Yes, they are giving us. And we have another uh, partner, NTRC, Nigerian Tulip International Colleges. Those who are coming from uh, ministry scholarship. So we are handovering to NTIC, Nigerian Tulip International College, to uh, develop their education site. And we are uh, responsible about the uh, football fields, like, I mean, uh, sports wise activities. So, because uh, our academy uh, is aimed to develop balanced education and sport-wise activities. Mm. This is important. Why? Because uh, I have been here since 2017. I am also a physical education teacher. But what I have seen here, who are interested in sport? They are not interested in education. But who are interested in education? They are not interested, interested in sports. Sports. <laughs> but we know a lot of talented students in a street. They are trying to identify themselves. But uh, you know, it, the sport-wise activities may help them to develop their future career. Mm. Maybe for studying, they may not get any uh, upward university scholarship, but what if they success at the sports? It's easy, they can get it. Good one there. Now, looking at the 20 students that will be given scholarship, are they going to be picked randomly across different states or only FCT? No, this, this is randomly picked uh, from randomly from uh, different states, from Abia, Anambra, Edo, uh, Lagos. We have uh, totally 21 for now. 21 uh, players yes. across different uh, yes. states in Nigeria. We've been talking with Dennis Kiley, the managing director of uh, Youth uh, Sports Academy, the team that represents the uh, Federal Capital 33, and they won the 39th edition of the Ramat Cup. They were able to do well there. Well, let's quickly have a glimpse of what happened in Kano. By the time we come back, we'll talk more. The star match of the quarterfinals pitched holders Kwara State against host Kano. Two second half goals by Imran Musa and Awal Ali secured the win for the junior Masugida side. The first semi final was decided in regulation time, ending 2 1 in favor of the Abuja based side. In the second semi final, the popular sports rivalry between Kano and Gombe States was maintained. The game ended 2 all at full time, and in the penalty shootout, Kano Pillars goalkeeper Salim Abdul Malik emerged hero of the day. This game truly surprised me a lot. When they scored us, I got upset. When we scored, I got excited. We scored again, but they later scored again. 
I got restless. I felt bad. When they got penalty and we lost it. I just lost hope on us winning, but we still pray for the best. The Gombe boys shrugged off disappointment of the semi-final loss to convincingly win the bronze medal. During the second half interval athletics event, had the boys compete in the 100 meters, 200 meters, and 4 by 100 meters relay. Several attempts to level the scores by the Kano State team could only come close. This year's competition, uh, like I've been observing year after year, we are progressing and we are achieving more. We are becoming. Well, that's a good uh, scenery there. I just have to uh, celebrate with Team FCT, represented by LU Sports Academy, as they were able to win the Wonder Competition 39 edition of Ramat Cup. Celebrating them, well, having the MD of that academy in the studio is at least a good one there. Yeah. And then, uh, Scaly, before I let you go, your player, uh, Edupolo or Sayo Day, yes. stand, he was the one that won the MVP. Your yes. coach won the best coach. And uh, at least your team scooping those awards. How do you feel? Like, uh, I feel so happy for them mm. because uh, they are the one uh, we represent Nigeria for the future, we believe. Uh, although uh, our, some of the athletes from different fields, athletics and swimming, they already represent Nigeria at the Ghana and Guinea international competition. So we are expecting also the same thing from football uh, players. To be one day uh, they will represent Nigeria with the uh, Nigerian flag actually. And uh, the coach, uh, about the coach, we trust him so much because he knows what he is doing. Like, uh, and each time the team is developing and getting more bigger. This is uh, important for us mm. to be continue those success with us. Uh, so uh, uh, I congratulate all of them, mm. especially the coach and uh, Peter. But at least you are happy. Yeah, of course. We well, before we go, happy. just one second, one word before we go, telling a viewer out there concerning taking into grassroots sport development. Okay. For this purpose, we have to discuss a lot of things, actually. Mm, maybe, because, you maybe you have yeah, to call next time for that. <laughs> because uh, uh, it's not only one factor you can build uh, grassroots. It has a lot of things like field, coaches, equipment, uh, time. Mm. We have, you have to put all together and you have to create something. Good one. For us, uh, our team, any of them, is as basketball or football, whatever it is, our fields, uh, all sports fields, they are training six days a week. But this is not easy as we are doing because some of them, they are staying in uh, Karo, some of them, Sulaja, you know, bringing them uh, together. all together. Uh, it's not easy and it is. it needs continuous. Good one there. We just have to call Tennis Kali there. It will still come one more time to talk about grassroots sport development. The team, NU Sports Academy, have been doing wonderfully well for the FCT as they won the Ramaz Cup there. Well, grassroots sport development is our aim too, to see how we can also add value to that on Trust TV. On the show, 360 Sport has been the top uh, the uh, title of the show where we've been giving you all the activities happening in the world of sport. I've been with the studio with NS Kelly. Good to have you once, uh, once again. Thank you so much. And I am Adini Ajisha Fair. Sport is always business and fitness. 
Have a splendid weekend, and thanks for watching.